Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. Today I'm looking at a book which has come to us from Oxford University Press and it's got the intriguing title Diplomatic Law. It's an established book and one that we'll have a look at in a bit more detail in a minute. It's actually got a subtitle, Commentary on the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations, now in a fourth edition and it's been written by Eileen Denzer. Um, it's available as a hardback and Elizabeth and I have given the title, we discussed this book um, in some detail and we've given it um, for our review, our appreciation, this title. Commentaries on the cornerstone of the modern international legal order, now in a new fourth edition. Now the point I would make straight away about this is that the, um, the book itself obviously been around now for a while, um, but the points about diplomatic law are and, and have been very much entwined with our relationships with everybody else. Let's look at the book first of all, because this is a commentary. It's described as a commentary by Eileen. And this is the front, and then there's the that's the spine. There's nothing on the back. That's the spine there. It's a hardback, and it's a nice book, a very good book by OUP. 450 odd pages. Um, page numbering used, not references, but pay, uh, referencing, but page numbering. Again, the index is not particularly long, but then you've got a detailed bibliography. There's a lot of scholastic work that's gone into this. Appendices, there are a couple of appendices. Um, the Vienna Convention is Appendix 1. If we go to the front of the book, we've then got, there is the main page there. And then you've got some acknowledgements um, from Eileen, dated September 2015. There's detail about the book itself uh, there. Then we've got the actual contents, and it's got the various articles that we're looking at. Um, again, running all the way through. It's a detailed work. Um, some case law, which is always interesting. And then after that, we get to a useful abbreviation. So there's quite a lot of abbreviating going on in diplomatic law. It's quite useful to know because sometimes it's so difficult to work out what some of these abbreviations mean. We can't assume things, so it's useful to have it. Then there's an introduction, which is well worth reading. Um, she starts off by saying, the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations codifies the rules for the exchange of embassies among sovereign states. And that's where we, we develop it from there. In fact, the introduction is quite detailed. And then the ob object of the book is then set out very clearly. It's a commentary on the Vienna Convention, in, in effect. There's a preamble. This is we're then looking at uh, the, the actual book itself. There's a preamble, and then after that you go into definitions, and it runs through from there. There is, uh, for instance, with the various articles, there are, are um, within the actual chapters lots of footnotes all the way through, um, and there's a lot of very very substantial detail in this work. Now, what do we say about the book? Because our review is on the web and in the journals. And what we've said is you don't necessarily have to be a legal advisor within the diplomatic community to find this book rather than enthralling read. It's not the easiest book to read. I found it as a lot of, a lot of content and you've got to understand the ways in which we operate under Vienna. But uh, I did feel that it's something that will, I think, enthrall people. The author, who is Eileen uh, Denzer, explains that the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations, on which this book provides informed and detailed commentary, codifies those rules which are instrumental in protecting the sanctity of ambassadors, enabling them to carry out their functions. These rules, she stresses, are the oldest established and the most fundamental rules of international law. And the Convention is a cornerstone of the modern international legal order. So you've got a, a clear statement there about the establishment of, if you like, an international rule of law, uh, because these are fundamental rules of international law. So it's recently been published now in a fourth edition by OUP, the Oxford University Press, and it's now a very highly regarded and well-established work, which is intended to function effectively as a practitioner's handbook. We expect to have this in embassies, 
people thought that would be fundamental, and hopefully in the Foreign Office, and therefore will be especially useful for international lawyers. And the author's authoritative commentary, for that is what it is, and analysis follows each article or group of articles within the Convention, with clear discussion and explication or explanation of, say, ambiguities and problems in interpretation. And she's very good at that because this is a delicate area, diplomacy being a delicate art, and um, there are, of course, naughty abuses, but we'll get on to those. Commentary is inevitably weighed in favour of the United Kingdom and the United States of American, America practice says the author, for there is much material dealing with practice in other states and countries. There are a number of historical notes and perspectives as well, reminding us that diplomacy, diplomats, diplomatic traditions and diplomatic law go back a long time. Did you know, for example, as explained in the commentary on persona non grata, Article 9 of the Convention, that in an early and, celebra uh, early and celebrated case, Queen Elizabeth I ordered the Spanish ambassador, one Don Bernardino de Mendoza, to leave the country within 15 days when it was discovered that he was involved in a plot to depose the Queen and replace her with Mary Queen of Scots. We all know what happened there. Elizabeth, who was a consummate diplomat herself, and fluent, of course, in a number of languages, very great Queen, great monarch, apparently deemed Don Bernardino's duplicity as merely personal, not attributable to the sending state. Whilst friendly relations with Spain were not restored, this particular matter set an important precedent which allowed erring diplomats to be expelled for ostensibly personal reasons, thus presuming avoiding uh, unnecessary conflict between the states, and you can see the sense of that. And it's a long time ago that that particular thing happened. Now, on examining the articles of the conventions, the Vienna Convention throughout, any number of international legal issues emerge from diplomatic immunity to the inviolability of the diplomatic bag. There are certain diplomatic niceties that have become controversial, having been either ignored or violated all too often by all too many diplomats, some of whom have exploited their diplomatic community to get away with serious crimes. Now, we're not here to ex obviously examine that, but I'm sure the press have highlighted a number of these cases. A lot of cases go, of course, unreported. Instances of such defiant and unruly behaviour, either in receiving states or on the world stage, are discussed often in detail, including, for example, the Iranian hostage, hostage crisis in 1979, in which the US Embassy in Tehran was attacked by Iranian students. Eventually, that difficult and protracted crisis was resolved by a judgment of the International Court of Justice, the ICJ, which, amongst other results, served to clarify the Convention. Now, we have to have conventions, and the difficulty really is that there's nothing much that we can do when people break the rules. And that's really where the problem is, because the rules are broken. Um, rules concerning the presumably the importation of guns, drugs, money, all sorts of things, um, stones, um, metals, all sorts of things that would not go through the normal system and be discovered are, are in fact sent through that way. And it is a problem, and with responsible states behaving properly, that's fine, there's no problem. It's the irresponsible ones, and that's, that's where the difficulties are. Of course, um, as I say, it's um, a book which is erudite. It's an impressive statement of what diplomatic law actually is and what presumably it may be becoming. Bearing in mind such ongoing controversies as the tension between the principle of non-interference in the affairs of a particular country and the duty to pr promote and champion the basic tenets of human rights are emerging more and more. And that's certainly something which um, I'm hoping some offending states will bear in mind. But you're always going to get a few rotten apples in the barrel. Now, finally, of course, the book does contain at the back, which I showed you earlier, the copy of the Vienna Convention on uh, Diplomatic Relations. That's as Appendix 1, followed at, uh, by a list 
in Appendix 2 of the 190 countries which are parties to the Convention. This, if anything, demonstrates that despite problems, the Vienna Convention has elicited a high degree of solidarity and rapport among nations, and the publication date for the new edition, that's the fourth, is cited at September 2015. Eileen's done an excellent job here. Uh, the comments that I did see of this work, um, the earlier editions, have been very favourable indeed. It's a good commentary, and I think she has the balance right. We're looking here, I'm just opening up um, at some of the um, basic for legal effect of establishment or lifting of an immunity. You see, one of the problems really is that there have to be occasions where immunity is lifted. We're not going back to Elizabeth the first time, but you can see that there will have to be on occasions people dealt with who've committed serious offences. There's Appendix 1, just to show the Vienna Convention set out. Um, and just at the front of the book again, do read uh, the acknowledgement section, which I think is very helpful. Thank you to Eileen and OUP. It's an excellent book. As I say, it's one that um, I do think um, probably we don't pay sufficient attention to what, go what is going on. But we are at the moment dealing with very serious international repercussions from... Um, the problems associated with extreme Islam behaviour and the difficulty therefore will be seeing what some people are trying to get away with by using the convention for basically criminal means because whatever you want to call these people who are doing some of these out committing these outrages you can call them terrorists freedom fighters they're all got one thing in common they're all criminals and that's the basic problem. And they shouldn't be allowed to use the cloak of diplomatic law to get away with it. There is a danger that they have in the past and probably will in the future, but we should be aware of it. And where we've got clear evidence, I think the immunity must be lifted because they are criminals and they should be dealt with accordingly. Thank you to all concerned anyway. It's an excellent book and I found it fascinating to read. Bye-bye.